Rescue all the stitches that I buggered up. Hello everyone and welcome back to So Biased. My name is Melissa and in today's video we are going to be making a World War II sweater for a Canadian Army service person. If you've been following my videos on the recreation of a Canadian Women's Army Corps uniform and if not, I will link the playlist above. I am a Canadian sewist. I am also a member of the Canadian Army. Obligatory disclosure, nothing I say is on behalf of the Canadian Armed Forces, the Canadian military, the government of Canada, or any of its representatives. All of my opinions are my own, and I do not speak on behalf of the military or of the government in any fashion whatsoever. I was able to get a close look at a museum piece of a Canadian Women's Army Corps uniform that's in a military museum near me, as well as I was able to take a pattern off of it, and I'm in the process of trying to re create it as well as create it in my size because the person who originally had this uniform was itty bitty. Now that being said, as part of the World War II sewing challenge, I've also gotten a lot of knitters interested in participating and knitting something that would be appropriate for rationing in World War II. During part of my research, I have discovered a whole bunch of knitting patterns that were created for people at home to knit for service members overseas, including this one. This is part of the Knitting for Victory campaign, and I will be doing another video at another point on the entire Knitting for Victory concept, particularly as it relates to knitting in the home front in World War II. I will also link to a playlist from Shannon of Shannon Makes up here that she has done about wartime knitting in general from, I think, the Civil War to present. Highly recommend that one. Now, this group of patterns was actually released by a Canadian yarn manufacturer by the name of Monarch. They are not in existence anymore. Trust me, I tried looking for them. But they released a whole bunch of patterns that would be appropriate to make for service members serving overseas. Everything from sweaters to socks to toques to everything in between. For those of you who are not Canadian, toques are the name of knit wool hats that you wear in the winter to keep you warm. Toque is the correct name. Now the great thing about these patterns is they issue them in a whole bunch of different sizes as well and there are patterns for both men and women which is fairly unusual because usually service dress focused entirely on men even though women have been serving in every conflict for the history of time. Don't come for me in the comments, I'll just block you. And since I'm recreating a women's army uniform from World War II, it seemed super appropriate to make a sweater that would be appropriate for a woman in the Women's Army Corps to wear along with this. The great part is Monarch actually has charts in the back of this booklet and others that they created to say, here is the appropriate color for each branch of the service. So you would send something black or I think navy blue for the Navy. You would send something a lighter blue for the Air Force and you would send something khaki for the Army. I don't know how this happened. Happen. I happen to have some leftover stash wool from a UFO that I never finished and I don't even remember what it was in a khaki green in the exact weight that I needed for this pattern. I decided to make this awesome sweater vest that can be worn with just the shirt and tie and either skirt or pants that go with the uniform. In the spirit of World War II and make do and mend, I am going to be using yarn I already have in the appropriate color to make a sweater vest for a service member. That service member being myself. Isn't it great? It's my birthday gift to me. <laughs> I'm so happy. But until then, let's get knitting. For this project, I had to do a lot of converting from UK to US because Canada likes to use a mixture of multiple different systems and makes Nina, that's loud. Could, Mina, could you not eat the bone right here? Okay, thanks for that. So I do have this knitting needle kit and it calls for a size 12 and 10 needle, which is UK sizes. And my needles are all, I don't know if you can see here, are all US sizes. Two, three, four, five. So the size 10 UK is a size three US and the size 12 UK is a size two US, which is literally the smallest one I have. Look at how tiny that is. That's crazy. Also, in a complete random fluke, I just happened to have a bunch of this green khaki wool in my stash. I have about eight skeins of it, which is pretty much exactly what I need. And it's the color that's recommended for army use. So this will actually be perfect. And I don't know how this happened. It's just complete serendipity. 
So I am going to use round needles because I'm lazy and I'm using metal needles because I don't care about being period and these are easier and I own them. So I'm going to start by working on the back. That's really loud. Um, Nina, can you take a breather? Thank you. I'm going to start by on the back, cast on a whole bunch of stitches and see how this pattern works out. Oh my goodness, it is finally coming along. So the first cables were gross, don't look at those. But what we have is you have this repeating pattern of kind of one small oval and then one large one. And then that just continues all the way up until you finished three of this pattern. And then we're gonna start shaping the armholes. Thankfully, I have a pretty good hang of the pattern now, but I am about two thirds of the way down the back. And then we're gonna start shaping the armholes. To do these cables, it wanted you to do knit twists and purl twists and that did not go well. So I ended up doing just the knit twists and just like a standard cable. And it looks a lot better than this garbage at the bottom. I swear, if an actual service member got this, they'd be like, um, can I get one from a competent knitter, please? That would be great. All right, so I'm going to continue with this. As soon as I finish this repeat, then I'm starting to shape the armholes. But so far, it is looking nice. All right, so I have just about run out of yarn, but I have this, which is what I originally bought the yarn for. So now I have to take undo all of it because I need the yarn to finish this off, which means frogging the whole thing, which is basically unknitting, which is really satisfying by the way. I'm not gonna lie. It just, it has this great kind of feel to it as you pull the yarn off. And then I'm gonna have to make a ball out of it, then continue on knitting the vest. Back is done and moved on to the front. It's basically the same. Like they don't even change the instructions. It just says, work as the back. And then you get to where the v-neck starts and it has you put half of it on a spare needle, which I did, and then just continue working on this side. You do a little bit of decreasing for the arm hole here, and then gradual decreasing for the neckline here until you get to the appropriate width. You just keep going until you get, I think it said 10 inches from the start of the armhole. Decrease for the shoulder and then cast off. And then you do go back to here and do the exact same thing. It's also smart that they want you to do the back first because the back does not look as good as this. It is much more chunky. If you actually measure from here to here, it's only 12 inches and it should be 24, but it's so stretchy that I don't think it'll be a problem but it is super super stretchy so that's yeah more than 24 already I took all the pins out of this. I was using a felt pad and a towel, so it's completely dry and I just removed the pins and it has stayed the exact same size and dimensions. Nothing has stretched, nothing has moved back. And even once I start moving it, it's not bouncing back to be a whole lot smaller than it was, which is super cool. This blocking thing really has something to it. The last thing for this pattern is I need to sew the sides together here and then I'm going to pick up stitches or on the armhole and then I'm going to make a small cuff. Is that okay? Yeah? Let's do that. Let's do some sewing. Okay, so we're pretty much done. The last steps were, so I had to pick up all the stitches around the neck and do a one knit, one purl ribbing. I think I was supposed to decrease around here. It ended up being a bit bigger, but when I tried it on, you don't see that kind of pouchiness, which is fine. And then same thing around the cuffs. You pick up all of the stitches around the cuff and then do knit one purl, one ribbing. Shannon mentioned that her armholes were really, really 
baggy and recommended I only pick up two out of three stitches but instead I did it in a size smaller needle and I also just cast off quite tightly so that I don't deal with that bagginess and when I tried it on it looked really good and again shoulders sewn together and and I love that you can't see the seams and it ended up being fairly invisible um, the one thing I noticed is it looks a little bit shorter than it does in the picture so I think I might have missed one repeat but that's okay it still fits it still goes down past my waist it is a very cool sweater that will make an amazing addition to my world war ii uniform <laughs> Well, that is my World War II service knit sweater. I'm really excited with the results. I learned so much from this. I had never blocked anything before. I'd never really done a finished garment path, like a scarf or mitts or socks or anything that was a little less fitted. So I'm really happy with the skills I learned from this. The blocking in particular is something I'm really impressed with and glad that I know now because I'm gonna use that for everything. This is just one part in the series I'm making about my Canadian Women's Army Corps uniform. If you want to know more, please subscribe so you can be updated every time I upload. Please ring the little bell and have a look at my Canadian Women's Army Corps playlist and the World War II Sewing Challenge playlist, all of which are listed in the description. Description. If you would like more information and more resources, if you would like to know all of my sources, or you would just like to help support this channel, please have a look at my coffee and feel free to throw me a few bucks. If you are a subscriber to my coffee, even if you've donated $1, you'll get access to behind the scenes information, as well as a list of all of my sources, including a whole bunch of vintage patterns. These vintage patterns are all outside of copyright, so you're welcome to hang on to them, distribute them, make them, because public domain is wonderful. I have lots more projects coming up, including some more knitting items, because I have had too much time on my hands recovering, and I have had to fill it with a whole lot of knitting, because knitting is really zen. So I hope you will stick around. I hope you will like and subscribe. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought or any ideas of what I should do in the future. And until then, stay happy and healthy, stay safe, take care of each other, and we'll see you all soon. Bye! Yes, I do. And a bit of Canadian history on... Uh...